Today we go to France for our steaks. Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of the Fogo Life. I'm Ron Dimfelmeyer, your host, Captain Ron. We have a special guest with us this week, Grill Girl Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So today we had to bring her because it's her birthday! Yeah. Woo! It's her 23rd birthday again. So For here like you go. The 20th year in a row. <laughs> Happy birthday, Robin. Thank so. you, Ron. This is very sweet. You're welcome. So glad you can, can join us. So um, if you're not familiar, I'm sure you are. If you haven't noticed, she's a pretty like major grill person. So you're tell great. us about what you do, Robin. Tell us all about your blog. Tell us about everything you've been doing. Well, back in 2008, on a whim and a couple glasses of Pinot Grigio, uh -huh. I started a website called Grill Girl, and that's when I had fallen in love with grilling. Okay. And then I discovered, you know, why is grilling such a man's domain? Like, why are more chicks not doing it, uh, right? Uh, 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 yeah, right? Because yeah, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. Like, I mean, I hate to say this, but like, if the dudes can do it, anybody can do it, right? Like, I'll it, say. It should, anyone should be able to grill. So I started the website and then eventually I got into competition barbecue. I started doing women's grilling clinics, yeah. which I have rebooted. And since then, I you know I started in Fort Lauderdale. Now I'm on the west coast of Florida. So it's it's been a really fun journey. And um, but I'm still trying to encourage more women to get out grilling. Awesome. Well, I had something cool special today planned for you. Since okay. since we're celebrating women grilling, yes. I figured let's go to the original woman cook, the original old school Julia Childs. We're going to make her steak au poivre today. I love it. All right. So we got a special plan to make steak au poivre, Julia Childs style. Except we're going to take the steaks. And instead of pan frying them like it happens in the recipe, we're going to adapt it to our way of cooking. Nice. Grill people. Yes. And we're going to reverse sear these. So we're going to cook them indirect first on the Minimax. Okay. All right. Now, are you going to let these come to room temp first? What do you, how do you feel about uh, absolutely. that? Absolutely. Okay. Come on. Hey, what are we, some kind of beginners here? <laughs> no. So we're going to do that. We're going to let take the steaks out just like they are now. We're going to let them sit for about a half an hour. Let them come to room temperature. This way, it's a much more even cooking process. Yeah. You're not heating the outside while the, ins while the inside is still frozen. What I like to do is I like to take my peppercorns. Now, we've got this beautiful mix of peppercorns here, all right? So mm. we're going to use two tablespoons. What I like to do is I put them in my mocajete, all right? And I crush them up. My mocajete. I thought we were doing French. Well, it's French and <laughs> Spanish, maybe? I don't know. Why, what do you do? How do you do it? What I do is uh -huh. let's just put some in a bag and bang it with this pot because... Not everybody has this at home. All right, so you're saying if you don't have a mocha head day, you can just kind of put them in there and what, you smash them with the pot? Yeah. I love it. All right, so let's go nice. two That's tablespoons. That's low tech way to do that. Jeez, you're so violent. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. All right. Wow, that really did do a nice job. Nice. That's the low tech option. That's, hey, listen, low tech. That's got my middle name. My, low tech is my middle name, I Robin. Like low tech. All right. You know what? Also, what? coffee grinder. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a great tip. So if you don't have a mocha head day, and you don't want to do that, you can use your coffee grinder too. But I'm going to show you too how we do it in the mocha head day so that you get an idea. That's sexy looking. And that is what it's supposed to look like. Nice, coarse, coarse, coarse crushed peppercorns. All right, Robin, so let's tell these people about the steaks that we're using here. These okay? are gorgeous steaks. Yeah, what we have is we have a New York strip. Okay. It's a prime New York strip. So you want to tell the nice folks what a prime strip is or what, what, what the difference is? Prime is basically the best marble you can get, other than maybe going a step further to be Wagyu. Right, which yeah. Which is still prime, but, but prime is like... This is what you want, fat equals flavor, that you're gonna get the most marbling with prime. I'm gonna season them up with a bunch of kosher salt. Coat them on both sides with kosher salt, so. A good, solid coating, because this is gonna sit on here. What's gonna happen is as these are sitting, the juices are gonna come up and out of there, grab that salt, grab that pepper, and pull that flavor back down into the meat so that the center is gonna be flavored too. Ooh, yeah. We gotta have total and complete coverage too. All right, Robin, if you could hold on to these for a minute here. So we're going to let these sit for about a half an hour, let them come to room temperature, okay? okay. Now we're going to cook this on our Minimax all right. in this beautiful carbon steel pan. Sweet. All right, so what we've got to do is we've got to do some prep. We've got to um, dice some shallots for the sauce. We've got to okay. measure out some uh, beef broth and things like that. So okay. we're going to let those rest, and let's get the Minimax all set and get going to cook these. And for today's cook, to monitor our temperatures, we'll be using our Meter Plus. Real simple. We're just going to place it right in the side of the steak, right in the middle of the meat. We want to know when that sucker is done. Well, we have reached a magic number of 115 degrees, so we're going to pull our steaks off of here. They certainly don't look cooked, but don't forget, we're going to sear them still. So there's one and two. 
Our next step is going to be to sear the steaks in a pan. So what we have okay. to do is we have to change this from indirect to direct. So while you put the steaks on the side, I will start getting our grill ready. Next part, we're going to, like I said, we're going to change this from indirect to direct. So we're just going to take our grate off and take our deflector out and simply put the grate back on. All right, now we're going to shut our bottom down because it's already heating up so the fire is getting plenty of air. Okay. Now we're using a carbon steel pan instead of cast iron. Um, I've been using this thing, I like it because it seems to heat up a lot quicker for one thing. Really? Yeah, and it really heats up evenly. Like, cast iron is supposed to heat up really evenly, but it takes a long time. It does. So these kind of really heat up quickly, and it really disperses the heat nicely, so that in just a couple minutes, the whole entire thing is like the same temperature. It's really cool. Okay, I'm kind of sold now. Yeah. So I want one. Okay, good. I'll sell you one. All right. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sear our steaks. We're just going to add a little bit of oil, about a teaspoon of oil, and a tablespoon of butter. All right, now our butter started brown, so we are plenty hot. That looks gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Cool. I need one of those. Oh, he's got all the equipment. All right, so we hit about a minute, just over a minute on each side. Look Ooh. at that beautiful sear. Sizzling. Bubbling, sizzling goodness. And we'll hit the other side real good. I'm thinking Julia might be proud of us here. She's definitely proud. All right, so we're all seared. We're just gonna take these off. Now we're gonna take these off and let these sit while we make our sauce. You see all this stuff in the pan here? Yeah. All right, I'm very fond of this yeah. <laughs> because it's called the fond. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add our shallots back into this pan when there's oil and butter and steak fat and everything. Mm. Oh my Let gosh. this cook down for a minute or two here. Oh my gosh, smell a vision. Now as you're doing this, if it gets too hot, feel free to take the pan off of the heat for a minute. Now here comes the fun part, the cognac. Oh, yes. Don't do this at home. You might just burn something up. Next thing we're going to do, add our stock in here. Okay, we're going to cook this down for a little bit now. All right, how's that, Robin? Oh my gosh. I wish you guys had smell of vision because this <laughs> smells amazing. I say that all the time. Like, we need, I wish you could smell this. It mm. smells so good. That cognac mixed with the shallots. I'm telling you, if I ever open a restaurant, I'm going to just have a pot of boiling, a, a pot of cooking onions with butter going. I'm just going to push that smell out to wherever it is and it'll just draw people in. That's how you draw them in. Yeah. So while we got this going, let me just tell you, we're going to just let this cook for about five minutes. We're going to let this reduce and cook down. We want that thos sauce to thicken up nicely. Not the sauce, mm. but the sauce. Now, a lot of you are asking, hey, where's the heavy cream? In the original French recipe for steak au poivre, there is no heavy cream. That's something that's been added over the years. Julia Childs would be rolling over in her grave if she saw us using that. So we're sticking true to her recipe and we're making stick up hob a la Julia Child. No heavy cream required. So instead of the heavy cream, what we do is we're gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of butter to yes. that. All right, we're not even gonna mix it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the pan and just kind of swirl it. Cause I want that butter to incorporate into there, yeah. but not like destroy it, you know? So we're gonna keep it nice like this. Butter makes everything better. Butter makes everything oh, better. Oh yes. All right, Robin. Steaks. Check. Sauce cooked. Check. Steak sliced. No check. Not, not. No check. We need to get a check. Sorry. Right. So let's grab one of these steaks. What we're going to do is we're going to put it right on the cutting board. We're going to slice it here and pour that sauce right over mm. it. We're going to eat it right off the cutting I'm board. How's so that sound? I'm so excited. Okay, me too. Well, Robin, what do you think? I'm so excited. Steak au poivre a la Julia Child. That looks mm. pretty amazing, doesn't it? I'm the, giddy with excitement. I know when you were spooning when you were spooning the shallots on there and like that. I was like, I just want to take a spoonful of that shallot mixer and just eat it like that. I think we should. God, it looks so good. Well, let me let me cover something really quick. We've used a lot of different products in this video today. If you see anything that you're interested in that we used, there's links to everything down below. Gr uh, Grill Girl Robin here has her own blog. There's going to be a link to her blog. Check it out. You won't be sorry. There's a ton of great information and great recipes. If you want to know anything about grilling, and <laughs> it is her birthday. The balloons want us to remind you that it's her birthday. So I think there's only one thing left to do. You take your birthday oh my taste. God. You guys, look at that. All right, cheers. It's a beautiful pink inside, too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, Lord. Wow. That's wow. so good. That's a mic drop meal right there. Mm -hmm. mm. I know there's a lot of new ways of doing things. A lot of, you know, cooking has progressed and there's all kinds of new techniques and everything like that. But I'll tell you something, there's something about an old classic recipe. Amen. I mean, that's tough to beat. You cannot beat this recipe. Bro. No, right? And it does not need cream. I was the just, butter I was, is, mm, I was just gonna so ask good. you, did you miss the heavy cream? I think that the heavy cream would be a distraction actually. The flavors in this are so good. 
and with the butter and the cognac and the shallots yeah. and the the leftover peppercorns that have been seared, mm. ah, all of it coming together is like the perfect bite. It all just kind of melds together, right? I mean, you can taste, you can really mm -hmm. taste the different things in there, but I agree with you. I don't think the cream is necessary. I think the butter does a really nice job on its own like that. And mixed with the cognac and the broth. Forget about <laughs> okay, it. Okay, forget about it. Wait, <laughs> I thought we were going French here now. I'm going one more bite. Folks, my friend, Girl Girl Robin, wish her a happy birthday in the comments down below, all right? Don't forget to hit thank up her you. blog. Listen, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We always appreciate all your support. Mm. I want you to remember to get out and grill, and we'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.